so I guess we're going to talk about um, team comp right now since yeah, there's nothing really else to talk about. And uh, it looks like the enemy team is going to probably have a Jarvan mid, a Teemo top, and a Diana jungle. I fully expect the enemy first pick to be a jungler due to the fact that they banned a Shaco. Uh, typically when someone bans a Shaco, they're going to be going jungle. There's a chance she could be going mid. Uh, because Shaco does cheese mid pretty frequently, but oftentimes when Shaco is banned, it's because the other person is a jungle main and they don't want to deal with those shenanigans that Shaco likes to pull. Now, I typically don't see Shaco bans all the way up until Diamond. Uh, once you hit Diamond, you start to see it more frequently because that's where a lot of one trick pony Shaco players are. But um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised. It's like silver or something right now on this account. Uh, but we're 2-0, so that's kind of exciting. Spoiler alert, a little too late to give you the spoiler alert. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched the previous videos for the placements, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, there's that. I don't know, what can I talk about? Um, enemy team comp right now, I guess, is pretty squish. Jarvan can go pretty tanky. Diana can get pretty tanky as well, so that's going to be kind of a concern late game. But early game, I think everyone on their team is pretty easy for me to just one-shot pop. Oh, please pick Sona. Please pick Sona. She's so squished. Just don't pick Nautilus because he's the worst. He's so hard to fight against. Uh, he's pretty strong. Or Braum. Braum's a problem too. Um, but yeah, I'm down with Sona. That's cool. Uh, what else is going to talk about? I guess we can talk about what happens in my real life. Uh, today, uh, okay, so normally when I park, I don't like Ash, but normally when I park at work, I park in a certain parking spot right by a lamp post, just because it, on the left side of the parking spot there is just grass. There's no parking spot, so I can just open my door as wide as I want and step out, and and it's easier to get my briefcase out and get my laptop out. It's just it's easier to do it that way, and so uh, I usually park there, and it's right underneath a lamp post. And uh, you'll understand why I keep saying it's underneath a lamp post once I tell you this. I like for the past week and a half, every time I go out to my car, there's bird poop all over it. And for the past week and a half, I'm sitting there thinking, do birds just hate me? I'm looking around the parking lot, and there's no other cars with bird poop on it. I look at mine, and the handle is, like, coated in, in feces, and my windshield, I'm pretty sure, is, like, a whole new shade of white instead of clear. Like, what the heck? And it took me a week to understand. I'm like, is, is the office pranking me? Like... Uh, do birds just like the smell of my car? Like, what's going on? And I finally looked up and I realized I'm right next to a lamppost. I'm such an idiot. And now I understand why nobody parks in that spot. Even though it's like a prime spot for getting out of your car easily, uh, birds poop right over that all the time. So <laughs> I discovered that today. So that was kind of exciting. By exciting, I don't, I mean, not good. You notice this, my masteries are set. So hopefully this time, I've confirmed in this part of the, the lobby that the masters are set. If they do not work this time, I'm just going to flip a table and leave and be done. I'm not actually going to do that, but I'm going to be so sad. Because that's that will be three games in a row where I don't have masteries. And I really want to play an actual game with masteries sometime in the near future. Let's check it. Yes, I finally have Masteries this game. I'm so excited for this one. Very first time I'm actually going with Masteries into a game. Oh man, this is going to be fun and exciting. Hey guys! Huh. That would be Alfie on YouTube that his video just popped up. For those of you wondering, uh, so today, it. Zoe, me, and Likonala are gonna do a little Instagram. What? What was that? What did you say? Lik Likonala? Is it like the name of their dog? I thought it was just Nala. I guess Likonala is it's kind of like Nicaragua, but for a dog name. Seriously, is this gonna be another five versus four for the first couple of minutes? Maybe it will. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't. Maybe the guy will show up before the game actually gets rolling. But uh, this seems to be a common problem nowadays is people don't connect to the game, which is kind of disappointing. So kind of disappointing.
Bloop. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and start off with standard jungle build. This is gonna be a different side of the map though. So I do like this side a lot better than the other one because it's a single camp. So this camp gets cleared a lot faster than these two. Because when you get a leash on these two, you only get a leash on the big one. Whereas when you get a leash on this one, you get a leash on the big one as well, but it's the entire camp. So when my bot lane leaves, it's pretty much over. Whereas when my bot leave, lane leaves down here, I have another two or three seconds of clearing the camp, which is oftentimes a little bit more uh, time consuming and I also take more damage. So I, I like the fact that I have um, this side just for that faster, safer leash. Ooh, excuse me, oh me, oh my. I'm sorry for those of you who now yawned because of that. And for those of you who didn't realize that I just yawned, I'm sorry that I made you yawn because they keep saying the word yawn. And at this point it's lost all meaning and I'm just, I'm at a loss for words, literally, because I don't know what the word would mean. Um, anyways, uh, let's see. I would guess that Jarvan would start on the bottom side because the leash is stronger. Although with a Teemo on top side, it's not the worst leash ever. He does have the ability to Q it. If Teemo starts E though, it'd be interesting. I think Pantheon versus Teemo is a pretty solid pickup. I think Pantheon does a great job in that matchup just because a lot of it is caster based and none of the Pantheon stuff is auto based aside from his, his regular auto attack, but you can't blind Pantheon's harass, which is really nice. So Teemo might be able to, you know, poke him down, but in a, in a skirmish or a scrappy fight, Pantheon will definitely win. I hope he started Q. Yes, he does. Say, if he didn't start Q and he didn't put down shrines, I'd be kind of disappointed. You guys can leave. Please leave. Thank you. A lot of people overstay. That's something that I, I find happen a lot, especially in lower elos, is people will way overstay on the camps. And it costs the jungler more health than they need to, to take. Um, let's see. I'm, actually, I'm here way too fast, actually. Let me show you the way. It would appear that Jarvan saw my trap coming. Which is disappointing. I guess I was way, I was like way too early. So we're actually going to go all the way around here. That's fine. We got the victory there. <coughs> we forced Jarvan out of his jungle. So yeah, I'm assuming he had a ward right here and that's why he freaked out. Because he's like, oh no, Nidalee's here and he ran away right away. So I got a ward over the wall, spooked him away, got a flash, and now he's forced to go back to base. And whereas I can just continue farming the jungle as if nothing happened. Now, of course, I'm going to take a bit of damage from this blue buff because I'm not kiting it properly, but, eh, whatever. I have a potion ticking. Not the end of the world. And so we have a couple of options here. We can go straight for my wolves and hope that Jarvan doesn't go for his red buff fast enough. Or we can go straight for him at his red buff and maybe catch him. I'm going to go for wolves because it's a safer option. I don't want to risk my early game and have no ability to do anything in the mid and late. Um, and so I'm going to go for Wolves first and see where we go from there. Jarvan might actually try to uh, counter invade. Actually, no, he won't because he knows that I didn't take his red. He's going to go to his red right away. No, right after doing his own blue. So I can catch him here still. I think. I mean, how low is Anivia? She's not that low. Why is she so scared? If she can get a stun. That was beautiful. Got her. Oh, baby. So I, I guess I could have sat around and killed Jarvan at his red buff, but I figure killing a, the enemy Diana in the mid is probably better than killing the Jarvan at his red buff. That worked out really well, though. She also flashed, so that kind of works out even better than I expected. I didn't think she would flash, I thought I just had the kill for sure, and then uh, the auto attack left my hands and it was just beautiful. That's another thing, whenever you go all in and you switch back to human form, always, always, always click for that auto attack. Don't sit there and say, oh darn, she got away, because if you don't click for that auto attack, that's an extra 100 damage you're letting go. 
This is actually gonna get really, really frisky here. This guy is gonna drag me to the end of the bed and and say, no, I'm not gonna live, and I got a little close there. But as you could tell, the early clear in the early game impact is a lot better with the, with masteries. Absolutely, I love it. Thank goodness. So that's always good. Uh, my own bot lane's doing a great job of pressuring it. Bar, oh, did I stop moving? Bar's done a good job of keeping control of the lane, but I don't think that these plays right here are really all that good an idea. I think Jarva might try to gank them soon as well. So I'm gonna try to make my way down bot side. I won't be in their lane quite yet, but I will be providing pressure and I'll be nearby in the event that Jarvan does show up so I can show up to clean up at the very least. So I think Jarvan will try to gank them in a very short while. So I'm gonna go ahead and head down here and just pop into this brush and sit. There he is. Well, I'm not gonna be able to do anything here. I think I got her. Oh, she just got a level up. Rip. I ran Oom. I mean, we traded one for one. And it was Jarvan that got wrecked. I could probably get Sona or Ash, but not both. We could try though. Oh man, if that had landed, that'd have been my freaking birthday right there. Oh, please, Rito. Oh. They tease me so much. Look at you're close. Eh, we're gonna take the kill from you. Oh, there's Diana. What a jerk face. Check for her there. Nope, no cigar. Beautiful. Rip. Our mid lane and Nidia just teaching the enemy team how to get fed. <laughs> She's really not playing very safe. It's something that is kind of expected from an Anivia in the lower elos is that they're just gonna play hyper aggressive. They're gonna play much like Froggen would, which is okay, but Froggen generally is a bit more calculated in the way that he plays Anivia. So I would say that it's a pretty bad problem. But we'll be okay. I think we'll manage. Diana though, if she gets fed as well as if, um, what's his face? T uh, actually, no, I think Diana's probably the only problem. Maybe Jarvan. If either of those two gets fed, it's going to be a lot harder for me to do a lot because they're, they're going to be pretty much off tanks. I know there's plenty of streams topside, so I'm probably going to avoid going top. Pantheon's just kind of handling it himself, which is it's a valiant thing. Good for him, but it's going to be difficult to manage. Uh, so yeah, this uh, this Anivia is completely oblivious to her own lane. I'm not going to give her blue buff, for sure. Uh, right now, if she doesn't even notice that Diana's missing until she's already been to another lane and back, <laughs> there's no way I'm giving her any form of, of blue buff, because that's going to just cost us in the long run. Uh, and again, it's nothing personal. It's just entirely personal. Um, I'm also a blue buff thief, or I'm selfish. I like the blue buff for myself, and I don't think that we would have much success with it on Anivia again. Looks like Diana will probably, or, or Jarva might try to gank bot. I think Diana is going to come bot, bot before anybody else though. Oh, she's not there yet. Ooh. Kinker. Goodbye, Ash. I'll miss ya. Mm. 
Diana might be sitting somewhere waiting to spook me in a brush. And I really don't like the threat of Diana just jumping out at my face. Because she's kind of a spooky character, especially when she rushes an abyssal. That's going to be my first item that I'm going to complete outside of this tier that I've already finished up. Is I'm going to end up rushing for an abyssal because Diana is going to be a very big factor in the mid and late game. However, at 10 minutes in, she's only got 52 CS. I'm not too worried. If she can get a stun on her, there's a Diana is dead her own. But she knows I'm here. There is clearly a ward. That's just great. Is there a Jarvan somewhere? There's Ash giving us the old one two hawk shot. Check for Diana over this wall. We are safe. Something that you should be getting used to doing as Nidalee if you've been playing her frequently enough is just getting used to the fact that your, your W in human form is pretty much worthless for anything other than a scouting tool. It's much like an Ash uh, hawk shot in the sense that you just use it to check around where the enemy team is. That's not good. Two people just got wrecked in bot lane again. Very, very bad news for me. Yeah, and the enemy team is really doing a great job of controlling the map here. It looks like Ash here, though. She's looking for some lovin'. And there's still an... What? Spear, please. I would very much appreciate some uh, saber play, though. There's clearly still a Diana hanging out. I don't know what the heck she's doing. Let me show you the way. Maybe I please grab some wards soon. You're gonna make me so much more sad when you don't do it, and I know you're not going to. Yeah, right now Diana is causing problems across the map, and Anivia's like it's one thing to just not be able to duel her, which makes perfect sense. Anivia can't do that, but we do need vision on Diana so we don't just get screwed over. Because right now we're pretty much fighting a four versus five across the map, and uh, Diana is just having that extra fifth man on the enemy team. It's causing us a lot of trouble. I can probably mess up Timo's day pretty hard here, and our Pantheon just wasted teleport. I'm not going to chase a Teemo because clearly that's going to get me killed every time. Uh, but yeah, Pantheon, he lost his tower really freaking hard. I couldn't do anything because he's not buying any pinks to basically package himself out. Teemo's just going to AFK right there. Good to know. He's sitting in lane. He's waiting to spook him. I can't contest the dragon now because my bot lane has no ward coverage. Like, they have ward coverage now, but they don't have any coverage over the dragon. And Anivia is AFK. Oh no, she's just back. Man, I'm so confused what's going on. No one on my team, I really understand what they're doing. Uh, which I guess is okay. I mean, I, I don't expect my team to be high level players, but... It gets kind of confusing for me, because now we lose mid tower for no reason at all. <laughs> As in Anivia, you should never really lose towers uh, after level 6, just because you have such great pressure in pushing. But I think she just doesn't have any of the... Oh god. She just got wrecked. Anivia, that's again! That can't keep happening, girl. I can probably get four kills, or yeah, I can probably get a quadra here. Please come up here, you stupid hoe. 
Oh my goodness, Anivia, please. There we go. Oh, baby. The Nidalee is cooking. The 6 0 kitty. And Anivia is not going to be eating blue buff again. There's no way. Sorry, babe. I just don't trust you. But our team comp should be fine. Uh, we don't really need that much, um, that many kills as a team. We just need to scale into late. And right now, I'm holding us together for the most part. We did lose two towers really early, though, which costs us a lot of map pressure. We should be able to take this one pretty quickly, though. That one should go down very, very fast. No, just take the freaking tower, you guys. Please, Eugene. Rip. Oh my goodness, team bro. Why you do this to me? <coughs> Please! No more! <coughs> I can't fight all of them! Jesus Christ. <coughs> that was what, four of them? That, no, that was all five I just fought. Oh man, that's not good. He's too afraid to push out now. We're probably gonna lose pretty miserably. An enemy has been slain. <coughs> there you go, good job. Thank you. Blames on his wave clear. No, I'm not like. I'm not saying you're doing anything. Well, yeah, he's totally doing something wrong right now. But I'm not saying that it's entirely. Oh my goodness. He didn't max E, he maxed W, didn't he? I bet that's what he did. Yeah, we're in a lot of trouble because he's not pushing. He's just freezing the lanes. Yeah, he can push this. Yeah, there's probably Teemo Shrooms everywhere. The fact that Diana is so fed is just a problem, to say the least. Jump on his butt! So Pantheon probably didn't need to dodge that with a flash. He probably could have just backed off and he would have been fine because he has his passive that gives him a shield. That's okay. And there's the Ash. Is she gonna ult? Looks like no. All right, so we're pretty darn fed as Nidalee. The problem is that the enemy Diana is almost equally fed, and it's gonna be a one versus one between the two of us. Luckily, she went Ludens, and I went Abyssal, meaning that I have a much better dueling pressure than she does right at this moment. But she will scale much better into the late game because she has much better uh, base health and base stats in general. So I can't duel her really at this point because there's a risk that if I duel her and she has backup, I die. Whereas if she duels me and I have backup, she probably won't. And uh, that's where I kind of get concerned. Because the whole game rests in both of our hands. Except for the enemy team probably has a little bit more control. And it's, it's interesting. It's, it's very much heavy pressure on your hands. And it teaches you to be very cautious and make a lot of calculated risks. But man, oh man, is it kind of difficult to make these things smart. Just hit it, just hit it. As long as I don't get stomped by a random ash ult, I'm cool.
Triple kill, boys. Bloop. Oh no. No. She got me with the ignite. Dang. They can't stop them unless they rush three home guards. Or unless nobody tries to wave clear. There he does. Come on, Anivia, use that ultimate, babe. Ash isn't going to do anything to him. Good stuff. We got that. Good stuff. So that was a lot of... Yeah, the Ignite was probably what did it to me. I didn't have my heal up, but that's okay. We got towers out of it. We got pressure. Who cares about kill steals, dude? It's about towers. Take towers, not kills. Doesn't matter about the kills. It's all Gucci. So let's see if we can't spook the Sona right here. She's gone down bottom side. She just warded over this wall, I bet. Or she's going to ward over this wall soon. There's the enemy Sona. I would love to fight him, but the entire enemy team is here. And I really don't want to deal with this. Because I don't have anybody backing me up. Oh, yo, yo. There we go. Please W. Goodbye, my friend. I will remember you. Will you remember me? That's a good Sona ult. I don't want to front line here because if I eat the Ash ult, I'm in a doomsday times. Oh, poop. She's so dead. This girl is not going anywhere. The heck? Anivia, what are you doing? Oh, there she goes. Good night. <laughs> So quite an enemy just flash, but that's all good. You're just chasing the enemy Diana around. Pretty much whoever gets the kill, Diana or me, wins the fight. And you notice I'm gonna kind of use Anivia as the meat shield for all of the enemies. Uh, oh baby, what? Heck, that was bizarre. <laughs> I did not even think he was over the wall. Maybe I had a packet loss or something, or a package drop or something. I don't know. That was really weird, though. Shenanigans. I'm really not a fan of Teemo though, because he can throw long games like it's nobody's uh, business. Uh oh. Goodbye, sweet cherry. Wait, what? Never mind. Uh, she's not dead. Cool. Bloop. Please, please let me live, uncle, uncle, oh baby, well I'll take it, works out well for us, 
<laughs> There's clearly a shroom somewhere nearby. Well, the enemy team blew a bunch of summoners on me there, and I just walked away because I had the Rhylite, or not the Rhylite, I had the Saracen Embrace, which is pretty ballin' perfect for these sorts of situations. Grab an early Abyssal and a Seraphs, and the enemy team is going to struggle to kill you, which is exactly what you want. You want to die. Death is for, it's for dead people. You can die when you're dead. Tautologies. Well, that's technically not a tautology. There's no conditional. See, Diane is not here, so this tower is free. I have too much damage right now. The tower goes down in about three seconds. Maybe that's a, an exaggeration. Probably more like five seconds. So Articuno got wreck-around. But this is free low, boys. Free low, free low, baby. Good night, my friend. Good night, sweet chariot. Mama's gonna show you just how. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. Burner, burner, burn, burn. Oh my goodness. The double ult, too much to handle. Well, we still killed Ash, and that was what was worth. Not at all, actually. That wasn't worth it at all. That was really dumb. But it's okay, because we are really early fed. And the kill went to Diana, so she's going to end up building a Lich Bane. Is that what she's doing? You know what? I will see your Lich Bane, and I will raise you A banner of command. Do you know why I'm building a banner of command? I want you guys to understand why I'm building this item in particular, because it's really important to understand. Let's go ahead and take a look at the enemy team right now. And I want you to analyze why I'm building a banner of command and how it's going to help our team. They have a Jarvan who's going pure tank. They have an Ash who's fairly far behind. They have a Tomb who's doing a pretty good job, and a Diane who's doing a stellar job. What does that mean? No, please. What does that mean for, uh, for the enemy team's damage? It's very heavily based on magic damage. Which means if I get a banner of command, for those of you who don't know this, the banner of command makes one minion Im immune to all magic damage. So Teemo has a very hard time clearing that minion. And uh, Diana can barely clear it as well. Uh, spells don't work on it. So as a result, pretty much it's impossible for the enemy top and mid laner to stop a minion. So if I put a banner of command minion in top or mid lane, it will auto push really freaking hard. Jinx come. We can do this as long as we have one person tank our own. Well now we're waiting way too long to try this. Everyone's on kind of a different page here. You probably one shot stopper. Jinx, Jinx, Jinx. Yo, babe. We would greatly appreciate your assistance. Alright, I'm running away. I'm scared. So yeah, Jinx didn't help on that at all. I don't know what the hell she was doing, but she just ran. Oh my goodness, Diane is a monster. She one-shot me. Yeah, that's pretty much troublesome days here. That was not smart on Bard's part. They gave Teemo a free entrance into our own team. So we're in a lot of trouble here. I don't see us doing well at all. Uh, just because it's entirely hinging on me. We can't do Baron. We've got to get more vision control on this. So what we did wrong there was that uh, we kind of just sat there around Baron. We're just like, all right, we're going to do Baron. Let's wait till the enemy team is ready, and then let's do it. Like. Generally, when you give the enemy team a full minute to prepare, 
doesn't matter how bad they are, they're gonna be prepared and they're gonna stomp on your balls. So uh, that was kind of what happened there. We kind of got foot castrated by the enemy team. Uh, I don't think we could have killed them. With Ash ult being a threat, I mean I eliminated Ash as fast as possible, but the fact that Ash had the ult threat, it's too much risk. And I don't want to risk the enemy, something is somewhere. I know, super specific. But I have a feeling that they have vision control here. We are going to lose a dragon. That's unfortunate, but we need vision control. Whoops, caps. Well, rip. Ash can't do anything now. Jinx cannot hesitate. There we go. As I say, please don't hit the scuttle crab, you little minx, you. The enemy jungler is Jarvan, and he's currently not going to be anywhere near us. We are Gucci, boys. We are Gucci. Let's see. The enemy Diana isn't even up yet. I don't think a Baron or a Dragon here is really all that worth. Uh, yeah, like I don't know why the enemy team rushed Dragon. We got Baron out of that. They got Dragon. Keep chasing, boys. Keep chasing. Or stop chasing and leave me to one versus three. That's always fun. Guys, come on. So I'm really kind of disappointed there. That was clearly a free engage on the enemy team, and we all just kind of... They, all four of them ran away from one person, which costs us our entire Baron advantage. I probably shouldn't have gone in there, but at that point I was super deep. There wasn't an escape for me. I don't know, wait for one person to call me an idiot. I guarantee you one person at least calls me an idiot for that one. You're gonna say, Nilly, you fucking idiot. You're so stupid, you got caught. There's no reason we shouldn't have, get, we shouldn't have collapsed on the Teemo and, and the, the Jarvan. Because Diana was nowhere near, like nowhere to be found. We would have been fine. But I am going to end up picking up the Banner of Command because I don't think my team has the ability to group properly. So I'm just going to end up using the cheese tactic and slicing out the top or mid lane. Probably the top lane would be the best bet. Let's see, right here. Please, Arone. Beautiful. So it doesn't get any extra range, but what it does get is a butt ton of extra damage. Look at this. It does 171 versus... Where is it? Versus 71. So it gets an extra 100 damage. That's a ton. Especially for clearing a tower on its own. Teemo can't stop it. Um, Diana can't stop it. And everyone else on their team is pretty much worthless. So we're, I think we're good. Pretty easy to take care of. You also notice I haven't swapped out for a, a Sweeper Trinket yet quite yet. Just because I don't think it's useful. I think my Bard's wards are pretty bad. So I want to make sure that I have a Sweeper Trinket up at all times. Uh, a regular trinket, like a, what is it called? A warding totem up at all times. So that I can at least see around walls and have vision control where I need it. Because I think it's a bigger problem to not know where the enemy team is than to make sure that they, know, they don't know where we are. Um, sweeper trinket is something you get after you have vision control. And right now, unfortunately, in low elo, you're never gonna... You're never, gonna have sweep, you're never gonna have vision control, sorry. You will have sweeper control, I guess, if you are support. But I would never advise picking up a sweeper as a non-support uh, in low elo. Just because there's never enough wards. Right now, the entire map is bare, yet we have all the enemy team's towers. And maybe it went the wrong way. Beautiful boys. Oh baby. Oh baby. Oh baby. That's game boys. <laughs> yeah. That's gonna probably be game over. I don't see any way that Teemo can stop this. They got their actually we probably can't because Baron just expired. We can take at least two inhibitors. Pretty darn good. I'll take it. And we can take the third. Please don't give up on me. I'm gonna trade it off to you. It's the aggro resets and perfect. 
So we can take triple inhibitors here, and we can back off, or we can continue to siege here. I just wanted to get the triple inhibitors because it's super, super useful. Let's go ahead and just do that. Get this thing to slap the tower a little bit harder. I jumped into that one like a scrub lord. Well, yep, I'm dumb. I I was way out of range there. I'm like, oh, there's an arrow coming. Swoop, and I'm just dead. I'm so dumb. I'm so, so stupid. <laughs> oh, man. That was seen in my... I bet you some of you are just sitting there like, is this guy actually anywhere above silver? Even diamonds have their moments. I'm a diamond in the rough. Oh, that was really bad. That was really, really bad. Straight up worst mechanics in North America. Well, at least we got four, three inhibitors. So we've got double minions. Also, that's another thing a lot of people don't know is three inhibitors is three times more effective than two inhibitors. A lot of people are like, it's just one extra inhibitor. You don't need it. Just push an end. Three inhibitors means six super minions every single wave. Two inhibitors means two super minions every single wave. That's an insane amount of extra super minions. Never, ever say, eh, we could have taken the third inhibitor, but I think dragon was worth. Third inhibitor is way more worth than a dragon. Unless it's fifth dragon, then it's kind of even, even. I still think third inhibitor would be more worth than a dragon. And in lower elo games, I'll often buy a greater vision totem. The, the pink ward upgrades my uh, trinket instead of buying a sweeper. Just because it's a relatively little cooldown, two minute cooldown, but it's static and it gives me vision control until the enemy team collapses on it and clears it, which is very, very good. It gives me knowledge of where the enemy team is as well as, okay, is there a ward nearby? Kind of like a double whammy. It doesn't let you see wards inside of brushes though, unless the, the pink is inside of a brush as well. So that's kind of the downside. See his team bro here? Oh, so close. <laughs> Oh, poor guy. Oh, I could have killed her if I just autoed her, but I screwed up. And I baited our Pantheon. I'm the worst. Let's go ahead and just upgrade. Let's upgrade this guy. Well, that's game. She's do well played, guys. I'll take it. Set with masteries, I seem to do a lot better. <laughs> but that would be the third game of placement. So it's a pretty solid one. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I got a little bit saltier in this game. I don't think I was too salty, but I did kind of get kind of rude-ish. Uh, not to my teammates, but on the stream. So I'm gonna kind of avoid doing that in the future. I was kind of making fun of the Anivia for being kind of a, a dumb, a dumb wit. <laughs> but anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully, it was enjoyable. Again. If you did enjoy this, please let me know. If you didn't enjoy this, please let me know. Tell me what I can do to improve or what I can do to, to kind of keep your attention or let you know. Or let me know like what you enjoy or what you don't enjoy. And again, if you guys aren't those people who like to press like or dislike uh, and you don't really want to comment, feel free to send me a private message on YouTube and I, I will always read those uh, and I'd be more than happy to take those advice as well. Thank you guys very much for watching again and I'll see you guys all next time.